in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Zechariah 1 from verse 18. Don't turn there. It says, and I saw four horns. How many horns? Four horns. It says, did are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Israel and Judah. These are the horns that lift up themselves, symbols of authority. Satanic forces stationed across territories. The Bible says, so that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent carpenters. These carpenters have been sent to terrorize these horns. Hallelujah. The carpenters are not men of God. The carpenters are citizens of the kingdom. Men and women, the saviors that the Bible says in Obadiah 21, that will arise from Zion and will judge the Mount of Esau. It's time for many of you to go into your homes with spiritual intelligence. No longer will you be confused. Things are happening and you just know the blood of Jesus or the power of the Holy Ghost or Holy Ghost fire. And after saying it three times, nothing happens and you are short of spiritual arsenals that you'll be equipped. The Bible says, he that escapes the sword of Elisha, Jehu will strike. There are spiritual laws. Hmm. Hallelujah. It is only based on that intelligence that when men are saying there is a casting down, you will say there is a lifting up because you understand the way the realm of the spirit works. Hallelujah. So part one will be considering, let's just start wherever we can stop. Praise God. Paul began to comment, he began to admonish the Hebrew church. Hebrews chapter 5, please, from verse 14 or from verse 11. Hebrews 5 from verse 11. And then we'll go down to chapter 6, verse 3. Paul was busy speaking to the people and he was disturbed because he wanted to communicate certain deep spiritual things. Let's read verse 11. It says, Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing that ye are dull of hearing. Verse 12. It says, for, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers. That means I expect you people to have risen to a dimension that you can begin to communicate these truths that you understand. It says, ye have need that one teach you again. The first principles of the oracles of God. It says, and have become such that have need of milk. That means there is milk. Are you getting my point? And there is strong meat. Hmm. Verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is what? Unskillful. You are a Christian. You are born again. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. But you are unskillful. That means you do not have sufficient intelligence to make use of the spiritual arsenals as at when due to the degree of their jurisdiction. The Bible says you are unskillful. In the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. 14. But strong meat. Kapalakata. Belonged to them who are of full age. Even those who by reason of use. Have their senses exercised. To discern. That means when they see things. They don't judge the way men judge. They judge in the light of an information. That they have about the realm of the spirit. When you see somebody. Terrorizing your family. You know that no. You are judging. This is not about my uncle or my auntie. There are powers in the heavens. And you know how to be able to bring victory. Not blaming uncle or auntie. When you see your father destroying you. You know that no my father is a good man. There is something the Bible says. Any man who just sees his neighbor. And says it's my neighbor that is cousin. He's a babe. He does not have sufficient spiritual intelligence. 6 verse 1. That's the end of verse chapter 5. 6 verse 1. He said, therefore, 
on account of this need that I've created, on account of the fact that there is an urgency in the spirit for you to rise from the realms of being babes, being taught certain starting things in the realm of the spirit that will not make you carry authority can i tell you something brothers and sisters i say this and i say it with all humility there are many teachings in the body of christ that will make believers remain babes and if we remain in that realm we will die although we are confessing that we are jesus christ we are, we are the disciples of jesus christ and so on and so forth there are many teachings that are good but if you do not rise, they become misleading. Because, see, this is why many believers stand helpless in the face of Satan. And we go back to we, the men of God, and the members come and ask us what is wrong. And we keep giving all kinds of crafty and childish explanations. The realm of the spirit is only threatened by the degree of light you carry. Malakatabora hmm. satire. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. That means there is a higher dimension. Thank God for the things we have studied. Thank God for the fact that, oh, you are this and that. Thank God for these foundational things. But Paul is saying, if we remain at this level, the sophistication of the realm of the spirit requires that there is progressive growth in understanding. If we must be ambassadors, there are people sick with cancer. Men of God have prayed and prayed and prayed. The people have died. There are people with HIV. Headaches have been healed. We have risen people from wheelchair. But why is it that some sicknesses seem to bow? There are laws we need to learn. Otherwise, those people will never be healed. Hallelujah. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation. Everybody say foundation amazing that most of most of the teachings we brag about in the church and call rema the bible calls it foundation foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards god verse 2 and of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands power the bible says it is even even that realm laying on of hands that we believe is the crux of success in ministry the Bible says it is a foundation. Hmm. And of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Verse 3. And this is our prayer this night. And this we will do if God permits. Hallelujah. So I'd like you to pray right now in one minute and say, Lord, I refuse to remain at the level of knowledge that I've had. I contend for higher levels of revelation. There is a generation waiting for me. My family members are counting on the revelation I will get tonight. The devil is destroying people. There are territories that are dying. And if we do not contend, there are churches that will pack up and die for nothing. If we do not step in in these dimensions of spiritual understanding to know when to launch attack on the works of darkness and establish what Christ has done. Pray from the depths of your heart. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. Got to be more. There's got to be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things. And we press in need. Gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me say, gotta be more than this. Gotta be more, gotta be more. Gotta be more than this. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are the desperate people. We want more, more. We are tired of the status quo. It's gotta be more than this. Listen. 
We are tired of burying people who should not die. We are tired of watching our families run away to herbalists as though the word of God is a lie. We are in this series. We are exploring to find answers. What is the answer, oh God? Why we have prayed and fasted about issues and it has not changed? Why am I still being pressed in the night although I'm born again? Why is it that I'm tightening? I'm giving and the doors are not opening. Can you pray for one minute? We're tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. We're tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more. Gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more. Gotta be more. Gotta be more than this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. My spirit is fired up this night. Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know tonight, brothers and sisters, is that we live in a world that is controlled from the realm of the spirit. Never forget this for as long as you live. I began that teaching in the teaching, give me this mountain. I began to explain to us the spiritual dimension of life. Life is everything spiritual. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It says for by it the elders obtain a good report. The Bible says through faith we understand that the walls, not one, the walls, systems were made. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? I need you to know that the realm of the spirit is real. Whether you are an atheist, whether you are whatever, is irrelevant. There is a real realm that birthed this physical realm. That realm was in existence before Genesis 1 verse 1. The real spiritual realm with inhabitants Praise the Lord. There are realms beyond that which the mortal eyes of man can physically see. That they are not seen does not mean they do not exist. Ephesians chapter 6. Generally, theologically speaking, the book of Ephesians is considered by theologians to contain the highest spiritual truths that um, summarizes the entire scope of the activities of men. Hallelujah. From chapter 1 to chapter 3. In the book of Ephesians. It tells us how and, and brings us to the understanding of our right and privileges in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Reminds us that we are seated with Christ. The realities of redemption. The things that have been wrought for us on account of what Christ has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it lets us see that the entire journey of the believer is hinged upon the platform of Christ's finished work. That is on account of his death, his burial and his resurrection that any other thing that will happen in the kingdom will happen. So chapter 1, 2 and 3 helps us to expand. Paul tells us how that by revelation he understood this. That we have been raised up with Christ. Hallelujah. And then chapter 4 and 5 begins to tell us how that um, it begins to explain to us, you know, our work as a believer, our character, how to live in the reality of what Christ died to give us. So our work, chapter 1 to 3 tells us about our sitting with Christ. And then chapter 4 and 5 tells us about our walking. Then chapter 3 tells us how to stand. It begins to tell us that although chapter 1 to 3 has already established the fact that all things have been brought under the feet of Jesus but there is an enemy, there is an adversity and because of that we have to be trained to stand hallelujah the psalmist prophetically speaking about that he said blessed is the man who does not walk in the way of sinners walk nor sit in the seat of the scornful nor stand 
So there is walking, sitting, standing. These are three prophetic postures in the spirit. Unfortunately, most people just know how to sit. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? Chapter 6 verse 12. Chapter 6 verse 12. The reality of the realm of the spirit. You don't need to have a vision or a trance to be convinced that there is a realm beyond that which you see. Hallelujah. Can we start from verse 11 please? Verse 11. It says put on the whole armor of God. Question. The same Paul that revealed to us in the Pauline epistles the revelation of our seated position with Christ now begins to admonish us. He said put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to what? Stand. Why will Paul say stand? Whereas he said we are already seated in heavenly places. Paul said we have been exalted far above thrones and dominions and every name that is named not just in this age but in the world to come. Now he's saying stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12 For we wrestle uh -uh. What are you saying again Paul? We are seated in a position of rest. Now you are talking of wrestling. He didn't say for we argue he said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. See how many times the Bible says against. It didn't say for. Against. 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 This is a contention. Look, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. This world is not a playground. Don't let films deceive you. Whether you believe it or not, there is a rude reality that every man born by a woman must face, especially in this day and age. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, where? Where is the location called high places? Stop. Help me. Use your Google map to show me a location called high places. Where do we find it? But the Bible says, there are planes in the spirit called high places. Where is it located? Geography students, scholars and intellectuals, help us. Where is the spiritual location called high places? Other versions say heavenly places. I told you, there are heavens and there is heaven. The Bible says the heaven of heavens. That means there are other heavens. We discussed that already. I don't want to go into it. The reality of heaven and hell, we touched that. Many people have gone to all of those astral realms and come back and told us they went to heaven. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There is a real realm, brothers and sisters. There are astral realms. There are people who live in this earth who travel there and come back. They go to get power they go to get wealth, real spiritual realms. By the grace of God, I've had the opportunity to minister to probably thousands of people. So I can tell you from the truth of God's word and from experience. There is a real realm. Are you listening to me? There is a real solid realm. The Bible calls Satan that old where was he living before Adam came? Because the Bible does not tell us he's young. He said that old serpent. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everybody said the realm of the spirit is real. I want you to also know that the realm of the spirit is not heaven. The realm of the spirit has all, there are demonic realms, demonic dimensions in the spirit. So if you are caught up in the realm of the spirit, you will just believe that you will see streets of gold. No, sir. You will see a real atmosphere like this. It's just that it is not solid and material. And it is not bounded by three dimensions. I have been there. It is not drama that I read from a book. In the realm of the spirit, there is no time and there is no distance. The concept of time and distance is the concept of physics. 
Isaac Newton developed it in mechanics to help people relate with the things. A process. But in the realm of the spirit, it does not exist. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. At once. At once. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing? Please do. Hallelujah. Another strange location. Although we use it prophetically as anywhere the believers are. Where is Mount Zion? Because the Bible says, ye are come to Mount Zion. That means you can come. Where is the location of Mount Zion? I'm not talking of geographical Mount Zion. Hallelujah. There have been many findings in our world today that the world has not been able to offer sufficient explanation. One of it is the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. Many people have been able to seek all kinds of explanation. Why is it that there is an intense magnetic field around that region that will wipe away everything at once, no matter how heavy it is? What is it about this strange thing? What is it about tornadoes and hurricanes that sweep across nations? How can a wind remove blocks and kill people? The spirit realm is real. Brothers and sisters, it's as real as this realm. As we are in this meeting right now, there are angels in this place. There are a lot of angels. The angels that have been sent to guard you because every child of God has angels. Once you are born again and you are in Christ, as a matter of fact, even when you are not born again, there are angels. Hallelujah. There are angels. I can prove that to you from scripture. Remember the Bible says when Peter was bound, the Bible says the apostles were praying. Is that true? When they were praying, the Bible says an angel came and took him out of the first um, barricade, second, third, and led him. When he came and knocked the door, they opened the door. They said they thought it was his angel and they closed it back. So we have angels. Second proof, are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation. And the Bible says we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So there are angels. There are also demon spirits. Yes, they are listening to me right now as I'm talking to you. The unfortunate thing is that many of them could not come this far. Because there is always a wall of fire that surrounds the people of God. I'm opening you up to the realm of the spirit. So that you begin to walk with this consciousness. I never walk alone. Never ever walk alone. There are special angels that follow us. When we are going for certain ministrations. They are angels that guard revelations. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says he sent it and signified it by his angel. There are angels that guard the safe delivery of revelations. I am come to give thee Daniel understanding. There are angels that are signed. There are different strata and levels of angels. There are ministering spirits. This caliber of angels walk among men. They walk among men. There is the northern army of God. There are all kinds and varieties. There are seraphs. There are cherubims. There are messenger angels. Different strata of angels. There are not just angels like that. Satan was one of those cherubs. Let me surprise you. The opposite of God is not Satan. Don't insult God. The opposite of God is not Satan. In scripture, God weighed Satan and put angel Michael to handle him. It cannot be God. Twice there was an encounter. One, the mystery in heaven that was shown. Are you listening to me? From the foundations of time. The war in heaven. Michael took care of Satan. The second encounter was during taking the body of Moses. Satan came to claim the body. And Michael said again, the Lord rebuke you. And in the end time, in the, in the last battle, the Bible says that Michael will be released again. 
Hallelujah. And so there are different structures. There is an organogram of angels. There are angels that are in charge of praise and worship. There are angels that are in charge of prayer. They take the prayers of God upon files. All these things are in scripture. I'm not talking about the angelic realm. I just want to open you up to the reality of the spirit realm. When you are still in, there are demons watching you. Hello? There are angels watching you. That is the reason why Satan has been able to give himself a name called the accuser. Why is he the accuser? He has a vast army station that monitors the activities of believers part time. Are you aware of that? Praise the Lord. So the realm of the spirit is real. There are four substances that were borrowed from the realm of the spirit into this realm. This is why science cannot fully understand them. Number one, light. Light is not just a physical substance. Light is a spiritual substance. This is the reason why quantum physics is very difficult. It's an attempt to open people up to a realm that is not three-dimensional. Don't blame yourself when people say you are not good in quantum, although read. But I'm just telling you, it's not child's play. Hallelujah. Number two, fire. Everybody look at me. What is this terrible thing called fire? You cannot hold it, yet it is not threatened by anything. You can't box it. You can't put it in a box and wrap it. It will burn everything. Yet, it does not have any force that you can see, but it consumes. These are spiritual realities. Number three, water. This thing called water. Strange. Number four, wind. You can't catch it, but the effect is undeniable. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? And then you understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? And then you understand that the Lord is here. So everybody said the realm of the spirit is real. The psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through a valley called the shadow of death. Who told the psalmist it was a valley and not a mountain of the shadow of death? How did the psalmist see it? The psalmist said, He will give you a garment called praise. So praise is not just what you sing. It's a garment in the realm of the spirit. You can wear it. Hallelujah. The realm of the spirit is an exciting realm. The last thing I want to talk about. Oh, I said four things. Five. There is the fifth one. Words. Words. Dangerous spiritual mysteries that defy physical explanation. Words have sent nations to war. Because somebody, somebody spoke. The earth was created with a word. It will be destroyed with a word. What is it about words? The words that I speak, they are spirit and life. Look at me. I said it here. Let me say it again. During the time of the apostles, they didn't have this. I hope you know. What did they call their word of God? Because it was their experience today we call the word of God. So whenever they said the word is quick and powerful, what did they refer to? There needs to be a redefinition in the body of Christ. I believe this, of course. This I, I'm not against this at all. Hallelujah. The reality of the realm of the spirit heavenly places there are planes there are dimensions in the realm of the spirit another thing i want to tell you 
is that there are portals from the earth realm that physically open people out to the realm of the spirit. This will shock some of you. Did you hear what I said? There are what? Portals. Look at me please. There are physical portals. It is geography that told us the earth is round or good or what's the shape. I want to tell you that there are portals that physically open men out of this realm. I'll prove it to you from scripture. The Bible tells us, listen, the Bible tells us, listen please, that when the nation of Israel were asked to choose whether they were standing for God or not, the Bible says the ground opened. Is that true? Swallowed all of them at once and closed back as if nothing happened. Question, is the ground a living thing? Who asked it to open? Swallow them and close back up. Jacob got to a prophetic portal and he said, this is the gate of heaven. It wasn't just a vision. He said, where I am standing, I'm standing the gates of heaven. When Elijah was going to check out of the earth, he knew the exact place where there was a physical portal that would take him out of the earth. Beyond the Jordan, he said, Elijah, ask your request quickly because very soon you will see chariots come to take me. And immediately he looked, he saw chariots that came and picked his physical body out of the earth realm. When Jesus was about to go to heaven in Acts chapter 1, he knew the exact place to stay and he started levitating till he disappeared. Where are these portals? Ruth Heflin, one great woman that walked with the Lord, said a bit about this, but there was a woman called an around tree. An around tree was with Jesus every day of 2005. Every day. And she said that the Lord Jesus told her that there are 15 portals. 15 that open people up. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm just browsing through it because we we'll have to do a lot of studies. She, them, she showed all of them. There is a book within you know, the priestly bride and the heavens open. It's, you may not be able to get it except in PDF formats. But I just want you to know that there are realms. Hallelujah. There are realms. The third thing I want you to know is that spirit beings can materialize themselves and manifest in this realm. Are you getting me? Human beings cannot do that. But because the realm of the spirit is higher, human beings, I mean spirit beings, can materialize themselves and come into this earth realm. We are not alone. We've spoken about it, right? The mystery of the aliens. We explained it. Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, how that the world grew wickedly. Is that true? Is that in your Bible? And the Bible says the sons of God. I told you that word son of God is not technon or wheels of God. It was just a name. Demonic forces, spirit beings, superhuman people. The Bible says they came and they slept with the daughters of men. Is that true? And they gave birth to an aberration. Half man, half human being. We call them giants. Nephilims. They are still alive till today. And the Bible says, before the coming of Christ, it will be like the days of Noah again. That means there will be a repetition of that event. It's already happening. The unidentified flying objects, UFOs. Hello, planet Earth. I shall not die. You better know what you need to know to live. Otherwise, it will be a hateful time of life. I have a documentary. I have a documentary where people were digging into the earth realm. When they were digging, they found a place that could take 20,000 people below the earth and it was made by aliens. I have a documentary where these aliens have had meetings with United States presidents right from 1914s. They are alive. They are around. They are in the earth. Let CNN fool you. Let me tell you, when the church is raptured, this book will become a rebest seller again because every historian will buy it to try to understand everything this Bible said will come to pass. Every. Hallelujah. There are many realms. The dream realm is the realm of the spirit. Your dream realm is a real realm in the spirit. 
it's not those psychosomatic psycho whatever you know uh subconscious all this anything that is not physical is spiritual period hallelujah god came to solomon in a dream was it was it a mirage it was a real solid experience joseph had an encounter not to leave mary in a dream a dream realm is a real realm that's why somebody can have something in a dream and wake up physically is that true have you seen people sleep and they flood them and they woke up with physical marks all over there have you seen that happen so how did that happen thank you jesus the second thing I want you to know is that Satan is real. Everybody said one to go. Satan is real. Listen, one of the things that secular humanism is promoting in the western world and is creeping gradually into Africa is that Satan is trying to convince men using the tool of intellectualism that he does not exist. So people now teach even men of God in church they say the only devil that is there is your inner mind. Have you had those kind of psychopathic devilish Christian science teachings? The only devil is the one in your mind and if you can shift your mind away you bring out your limited you. Ah, be careful oh. Be very careful some of those teachings the bible says in the latter days men will give themselves to deceptive spirits different demons have appeared to people and brought all kinds of theology that we promote in the body of christ right now satan is real satan is not a mirage satan is not one bull with horns as freemasons tell us or the one you see in Tom and Jerry. Or all of those cartoons. Let me tell you the truth. Satan is real. Everybody say it. Satan is real. Demons are real. Say it. And wickedness is real. Satan is real. The Bible says when the sons of God came to meet with God. Satan was part of, their, of them. A real person. And God looked at him and said, ah, oh boy, where are you coming from? He said, going to and fro. He's a living thing. He's not a flower. Satan is not fire. He's a living thing. He can move. Only God knows how many times he has passed your street. <laughs> not demons. The real Satan himself. Hallelujah. I also want you to know that there are three qualities that make Satan not to be like God. Or there are three qualities that will test everything and put God in a position where he is alone. Number one, omniscience. Omniscience is the ability to know all things. Satan does not know all things. Please get this straight to your mind. Satan does not know all things. For instance, what you will become. Satan does not know. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear. He said, I has not seen any kind of eye. It has not seen. Nor ear heard. There are ways in the realm of the spirit that Satan can peep and have an idea. This is what soothsayers and diviners and necromancers, they can use stargazing and astrology to predict certain things. and wow people and perform magic like the Egyptian magicians. Hallelujah. Satan is real. Demons are real. Wickedness is real. Satan is not omniscient. He does not know all things. If he knew all things, he would have known where Moses was hiding and not waste time killing everybody. If he knew all things, he would have gone to kill Jesus at once. His trial and error. See, do you know why Satan killed Cain? I've told you. There was a prophecy in the Garden of Eden. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Eve gives birth to Cain. And Satan thought that Cain is the seed of the woman. So he came and entered Cain. Then he was shocked. And when he found out that they gave birth to another child, he said, Cain, kill Abel in case Abel is the seed of the woman. Are you seeing that? 
When Moses was born, Satan thought Moses was the seed of the woman. Then he missed it again. He kept, that's why when John the Baptist was born and he began to manifest, he moved through the scribes to ask him, are you the Messiah? In other words, let's verify. And Moses, I mean, Elijah, um, John the Baptist kept confusing them. He said, I'm a voice. They said, go confuse us. Who are you? We want to kill you. That's why Herodias asked for his head. What will you do with the head of the man? That's why when Jesus said, all right, I'm not hiding it again. I am. They started following him till he died. So it was a plan. Satan killed. I mean, Jesus allowed Satan through people to kill him. And I will tell you why. It's still a law in the realm of the spirit. If you kill a man, the person's blood is permitted to haunt you for life. We'll talk about that. Don't worry. John 8 44. Who is Satan? Who is this guy called Satan that has threatened people? When you are going home alone, you just start hearing sounds that you shouldn't hear because you are afraid. There is Satan. If you watch a Nigerian film, we watch one fearful film years ago called uh, what they call it, Ultimate Power. Ha! That film was not very encouraging. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. It says he was a murderer from the beginning. Ah, ah. That's a terrible description. That means there is a story we don't know. Where is the story that brought Satan as a murderer? There are hidden stories enshrined. So Jesus was saying, I know this guy, yo. There are lots of stories you don't know. You just know Genesis from 1 verse 2. There is a lot more. Even part of his archives was that he was once a murderer. When did this happen? From the beginning. And he abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. He said when he speaketh, he speaketh a lie of his own. He said for he is a liar. And the originator of all them that lie. The word lie there is not just negating the truth. It's deception. Satan is a deceiver. His, his character is to deceive. He deceived the whole world. The badge of Satan is deception. What is deception? To make men err from the truth. It says ye err not knowing the scriptures. Deception. So every time the spirit of the Antichrist is manifesting in a place, there is deception. I spoke about that prophetic insight into God's agenda. You can get the teaching. Deception. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Revelations 12 verse, verse 9. Revelations 12, I believe verse 9. Let's turn there quickly. It Or verse 7. Let's start from verse 7. It gives us another history that many of you may have not paid attention to. And there was war in... Why will there not be war on earth when even in heaven there was war? Is that in your Bible? Heaven, there was war. Michael and his angels fought against who? The dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels. This was Satan. Satan. And prevailed not. Neither was there found a place for him in heaven. This was the judgment before Genesis 1 verse 2. Listen. The Bible says in Genesis 1 1. It says in the beginning. The beginning of beginnings. Deathless past. It says God created the heavens and the earth. We don't know how long that was. No historian can know. Are you following me now? Then between Genesis 1 verse 1. And Genesis 1 verse 2. Was millions and probably billions of years. Are you following me now? This story is sandwiched between Genesis 1 verse 1 and 1 verse 2. There was a lot of things that happened. And the Bible says Lucifer was cast down. That was, it was the judgment that led to the chaos in Genesis 1 verse 2. Are you getting me now? Now the earth, after that judgment, was void. There was water. There was darkness. And then God was going to recreate the earth. What happened in Genesis 1 verse 3 was a recreation. That's why Elohim said, the first thing he said was, let there be light. The light there was not sunlight. Because 
a few verses later he made two great lights one to rule the day so the light there was not sunlight to know more about that light you go to john one he said in him was light and that light was the light of men so that light is the quality of his person that sponsors creation let there be light hallelujah it says and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent aha uh -huh, you see now so this serpent story is not a it's a very old story are you getting me this issue of serpent are you seeing why you see things around snakes 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 deliverance with snakes serpent he said i have given you power to tread upon serpents what was jesus saying couldn't he just say to tread upon the devil why did he use the word serpent i will tell you he said satan which deceived what look at how crafty satan is the bible says satan it is within his craftiness to deceive the whole world he was cast into the earth and the angels cast with him deceives the whole world he deceives the whole world he accuses the brethren the bible says day and night it was satan listen it was satan who went and god was speaking to him he said have you considered my servant job and satan said of course uh -uh. after going to and fro the earth i must have seen job he said did you cover him for nothing take away the barricade give me permission that's another law in the realm of the spirit we are going to talk about satan confessed that he could not touch a man satan testified before god that it was impossible for him to touch a man do you know there are men satan does not touch today jesus said satan cometh to me and will not find nothing of himself when see listen when jesus became man remember the bible tells us satan is the god of this world the god of the system cosmos not the earth cosmos the system hallelujah that was why satan looked at jesus come this, this, this is what he did to jesus in the temptation the bible says when he came and met him he said turn this stone to bread jesus didn't shout at satan why and then he said follow me and jesus was following satan he took him to a mountain and showed him the kingdoms how can satan drag jesus and jesus will just follow like this i will tell you why because satan was the legal occupant of the earth he collected the keys from adam and until then the keys had not been collected yet so he could brag he said jesus i know you came to collect this key let's negotiate bow let me just give you must you go to the cross if jesus didn't go to the cross there will be no blood satan would have collected it back from man so jesus said no i have to go through a process blood must speak satan was wise listen if, if jesus gave him the key satan would have laughed later on he would have collected it back from man because there was no blood <laughs> it's the same deceit that he did for cain cain sacrificed and refused to put blood and so his sacrifice was not accepted because Satan was afraid. Let the sacrifice of Cain not be accepted. Paradventure he is the seed that will bruise him. So he deceived him. Why this waste? Give yourself short cut. Just use vegetables. And Abel there was blood on his sacrifice. And he reached the heavens. When Elijah was going to call on God. He said get me blood first. Without blood I cannot call on God. I will explain to you. Why every time they kill in this country. People become richer. The mystery of blood money every morning the earth is blood money whether it's the blood of jesus or the blood of demons there is blood that sponsors everything Listen, wherever we can stop tonight we'll stop john 10 10. the bible says the thief another name for him the devil is very hard working look at the names he earned for himself by trying different methods it's his methodology that gave him these names another name now we're seeing the thief the dragon was not enough for him the deceiver the accuser now he has earned himself another name the thief 
The thief cometh not. That means you will never see Satan except to do this. To steal, to kill, to destroy. Everybody say to steal. Say to kill. Say to destroy. So if anybody fools you that the devil doesn't have any plans for your life or your family, let me shock you now. Get out of that deceit quick before it gets too late. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan pursued Jesus from birth till he went to heaven. From birth till he went to heaven. Is that true? Satan was, he paid people to say Jesus was not alive. He's still paying people today. Paying Channel O, paying MTV, paying his envoys. Remember our teaching last week, envoys of his presence. Satan also has envoys. He's a deceiver. He's the arch enemy of the church. Satan is the arch enemy of the church. What is his purpose? Look at me. If, if this is where I stop, this night is all right. I must let you, let's uncover this Satan puzzle. Look at me, everybody. Why is Satan desperate to destroy man? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Why wouldn't it, there are people who used to say, why wouldn't the devil let me go? Let me go now. Eh? Let my family go. The devil is saying, you have not seen anything yet. If you know what I suffered before you were born, you do, I don't plan to leave you until I... See, many of you don't know how old Satan is. Satan tried Moses. He tried everybody. He didn't leave them. They forced him to leave them. So you, you just come in the middle of history. And believe because you just said, oh, I'm born again. The devil said, okay, let's concentrate on others. You think so? The angrier he gets, he gets angry by the day because his time is short. He's more determined over our generation than any other generation. Listen, I want to tell you something. From the 70s down to the 90s, Satan had been plotting a dangerous arsenal against the American church. He deceived them into believing that when you are born again, that's all. They taught it and they transferred it to us. Look at what is happening to America now because of that gospel. Who would have known that a man would look at another man and wants to sleep with him? Even a preacher. Look at it was happening behind the scene. While they were just telling themselves everything is okay. The devil is saying, time, I am patient. I can be patient for a whole generation. He kept mapping his strategy. Right now, they are removing the commandments. They are doing everything. People are occupying positions. And he's coming to Africa softly. And God is raising people. Say, Joshua Selman, arise. You are this horn. And Koinonia, arise. Yes. Because if we keep allowing this incomplete gospel to fool us, one day, a day will come catastrophe will happen again in Nigeria. Maybe we'll start sleeping with animals. But there are carpenters that will not bow. Look at what has happened to America, brothers and sisters. This was a place I was discussing with somebody. I said, where are the people who carried the mantles of Smith Wigglesworth? Where are they? they were, do you know Satan made sure a generation did not take the mantle? While these guys were preaching, Satan was busy taking. He started destroying these people from a tender age. And right now, Cartoon Network, all of these many networks, I'm not saying they are bad, but I'm saying there is another conspiracy to destroy young people. Satan can be patient even if he's 50 years. Right now, they will show sex in a cartoon and do something, something that was for entertainment and children are watching and the parents say they are small. Hold on. Very soon, you will see them get up one day and you will see the drama that begins to happen. You will see police with your son. Where is he coming from? He went to sleep with somebody. They say, oh yeah, let's go to the prison. That's when you will know that there is drama. You say, you? 12 years. 12 years. What do you know about this? I watched it somewhere. Or you catch, look at all the people that are terrorizing the country. Which old man has the strength to carry God? Who doesn't like his life like that in his old age after suffering he wants to enjoy the remaining one decade or two de decades young people because i'm sorry to say this and i have a lot of honor for our father but their eyes are becoming dim like elisha and, and like eli and it's money that is making that eyes become dim 
So they are concentrating on building a lot of empires. And therefore, right now, many churches do not have respect for the youth. There are many churches that don't even have provision for Sunday school again. Is that true? And they think it is not necessary. Young people in many churches don't have a place again. The elders come with their philosophy. This little boy now, no provision for him. So he will get up with a godless mindset. They just leave them to be playing outside. As if demons cannot enter them. When you say anything, they say, please, don't be fanatical. It's children. Until the day the child says, I am the one that tied the father's head. The, the father will look at the child. Six years old, he say, yes, I'm the one that tied your head. This is what is happening around. This is what is happening around. Don't laugh. I counsel people all the time. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Wake up tonight. The weapons of our warfare. is a deceiver. The arch enemy of the church. Let me round up quickly by telling us what the agenda of Satan is. Satan is very visionary. He's not just trying to chase people up and down. Hallelujah. Listen. I want to tell you something. The devil is not interested in frivolities. There is a reason why he wants to get people down. Three reasons. Number one. Satan is on a revenge mission. You must understand this. Everybody say revenge mission. Have you watched films that they came and destroyed the actor's people and they thought they were dead and the actor said, I must revenge. All these Chinese films, Satan is on his own Chinese film. He has been doing it since and he will not give up. This, you see this story we just read in Revelation? That thing stung the ego of Satan. God didn't even fight. It was Michael that arranged him. They sent him to the earth. And Satan had been angry. Now guess what? What was Satan's annoyance? Listen. Satan was the value cherub that covereth. Are you getting me? Because the angels of God excel in strength. Why do they excel in strength? Because they are standing in the presence of God. And because God is ever changing. They are a reflection of his ever changing nature. So Satan being the closest cherub to God got to a point where he was an embodiment of all. Even other angels. Listen, Satan had the power to discipline other angels. That's what the lake of fire was created for. The, I've told you this. The lake of fire is not hell. Remember, I proved to you from scripture that hell, death and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. It had been there. It had been there. There's no time I would have shown you from the word of God. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Oh, it has been there. Yes. They are not just creating it. They are finished sins. That was the reason why when Satan conspired and he was, what did he want? He wanted to exalt himself and carry the nature of God. He had the likeness of God. The angels have the likeness of God. That's why they excel in strength. The brightness of his glory. Are you getting me? God has two hands. Angels have two hands, not three. Are you getting me? If you see one with three, be careful. Be very careful. Hallelujah. So that's his likeness. But Satan wanted the image of God. That quality that can make him to begin to legislate like God. And God said, uh -uh, you have gone too far. And he cast him down. And guess what? He created man and now gave man the prayer request of Satan. You get the point? God now gave us that. Satan was watching. When God said, let them have dominion. Satan said, what? This is what you threw me down for. It's unfair. It, that's why occultic tell you that God was unfair to Satan. This is the unfairness. They say, how can God refuse to? He punished Satan for wanting something and gave man who did not ask for it. That's why I say, what manner of love? You see it? What manner of love? So Satan said, no way. This is a mockery to my personality. God will mold clay. You know how angels were made? Angels were not made from sand. Angels were made. How many of you have seen lightning? Lightning. That is the material of their creation. The least angel was made from that light. So Satan watched God mold clay. He, weaks, he uses the weak things. Are you getting me now? So he used clay and put his image and Satan said, come on. No, no way. We are going to fight against this. So that anger 
is what Satan still has towards you. You gave your life to Christ and you believe Satan is your friend. Now, with all this story I've told you, do you think he wants to leave you? Hallelujah. This is that old story. So Satan came to Adam. Listen, why did he come to Adam? He came to Adam because he saw God giving him the keys. God gave him the keys. And he knew that through reproduction, he was going to reproduce people after his kind, who are after the kind of God. And they will intimidate Satan again. Satan cannot stand seeing people with the image of God. They, how many of you, let me, let's, let's be very honest. Brothers will understand this. Brother, you like a particular lady. You don't know what to do about it. The thing is eating you. Then somebody that you feel is not up to you will just come and meet her. And then the lady will be dying for the person. You get that pain, multiply it times infinity. That's what Satan is feeling today. Because the church is the bride of Christ. You see that pain. So every time I stand, mortal clay, I say, let it be. And it becomes, Satan is annoyed. How can clay, clay, the psalmist say, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Did you not see angels that you could make men? What is man that thou art mindful of him? Not the son of man that thou visitest him some age. He said you have made him a little lower than Elohim. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. This is how special you are. If you understand this, you will not let any man drag your life in a mud. It took God a lot to make you what you are. That's a permanent cure for inferiority. Just see the efforts God made to birth you. See how many angels would have taken your place. They all stood hoping and God said, I have another plan. It's not one of you. He started molding clay and breathed into that clay and called it Adam. Even when man fell, God went out of his way to start pursuing man. It pains Satan again. Ha! I fell once. You punish me. Man has fallen many times. You are still looking for him. This is injustice. You see it? You see what pain Satan. So he came and met Joshua the high priest and said, God, I'm coming to accuse. This guy is a priest. He's garment. You punish me for falling. Now look at this man. And God said, I just love him. Case closed. I am God. I can veto anything. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. Why will I not love him with all my heart? This is not an issue of psyching you. You let aside your majesty. Gave up everything for me. Suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign forever and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. Listen, if you stop loving God because He didn't give you a husband, you are a wicked person. Look at what he went through. And will he not give you prosperity or ministry? You see why God gets angry when men stop trusting him. He says you are ungrateful people. Look at what I did to you. Only because the breakthrough did not come. Now you are backsliding. That's why I love him with my life. Money or no money. Ministry or no ministry. He has already done too much. Too much. Listen, if God called one of the angels and gave him his image, he is still God. 
how many, look at how many times people fail God and it's not like we went and we were repentant he was the one chasing us and begging this thing this thing is still paining Satan till tomorrow why will God leave his throne let me tell you when Satan saw Jesus becoming a baby he knew that this was the height of in quote stupidity of God not only did God chase man through the prophets now the word became flesh came and entered the womb of a woman was patient for 30 years men insulted him that's why he came to Jesus and said I am concerned about your humiliation take the keys just bow to me and God said no that's why the Bible says wherefore God so highly God was so impressed by the humility of Jesus look at all the stars he created yet he degraded there are cadres in the realm of the spirit he became lower than the seraphs lower than that's why see to an extent the bible says after his fasting and prayer angels came and ministered to him they were consoling their maker what humility so satan is on a revenge mission there is anger and annoyance that's why he will not leave your family that's why he will keep deceiving preachers to tell people everything is all right just shake your body and feel nice let me tell you the truth get out i'm not saying be angry or criticize any man of god <laughs> but the moment you do that satan start taking a breath of fresh air and says please continue if you need money for this kind of ministry i'll keep giving you money that's why some people get money without praying they think it's god that is giving it satan is saying camp at this level if it's, if money will make you not to pray take the money stop praying just be enjoying the money let me continue dealing with other people but there are some people that have determined money or no money it can't stop our prayer every day we will shake the gates they must hear this sound we must register our presence prosperity or no prosperity whether my family needs help or not is a sign i'm just letting satan know hello good morning ambassadors are still alive hey. hallelujah the second reason listen is because there is something called the written judgment judgment that has been written for satan i hope you know that nobody can pray it we cannot gather now and say god forgive satan please uh -huh. it is written are you getting me now so satan believes listen satan knows he's going to the lake of fire i hope you know that he has deceived the demonic realm to believe that he will overthrow mankind listen and except the army rise it looks like it's possible because when you see the way Satan is possessing and oppressing families, it looks like there is no hope. So Satan keeps convincing the demons and say, if we continue, a day will come, we will destroy mankind and God will do another strategy and this lake of fire agenda might be cancelled. Are you getting it now? Because for as long as the church does not rise, Jesus cannot come. I hope you know that. Yeah. The coming of Jesus is not a mystery. Please, don't. I have shown you. I have shown you. Jesus is not coming like a thief in the night to the church. Brothers and sisters. 1 Thessalonians 5. Please, very quickly. 1 Thessalonians 5. Let's just settle this in once and for all. I've told you. He's coming like a thief in the night. The Bible says that. The question is to who? Not to the church. How can he love us so much and come like a thief in the night to us? Who is he afraid of that is coming like a thief? Let's look at it. See, a lot of theology that we got, we believe them, we are convinced. Everybody, look up, I'll start reading. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. Verse 2. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh like a thief in the night this is where many of our theologians stop is that true but there is more read on for when they who are the day not us 
when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape if you love God and you believe in his word read verse 4 one to go is it not in your bible is that not it he said but ye brethren he has spoken about they the foolish virgins who are outside now he's saying ye brethren you are not in darkness so why should it come in the night he says that that day should overtake you like a thief is it not the spirit and the bride that tells the world to come the world does not just come the spirit koinonia in partnership it is the church in partnership with the holy spirit who say we have conquered the systems king of kings come and behold the works of your bride and he will come and come and harvest a church without spot or wrinkle so it is because we are in the end times that god is releasing apostolic and prophetic graces to accelerate the advancement of the kingdom there are souls to be won a lot of people who are saying Jesus is coming, they don't have a passion for God. It is true, don't get me wrong. Jesus is really coming soon. Very, very soon. That's why he puts an urgency upon us. That's why we are launching things like Project 10,000 to make sure that we can push this gospel. That's why we are sending all our messages free. We don't have time to look for money right now. There is an urgency on the ground. Why do we do all of these things? If we are looking for a name, can't we just write books and be receiving royalties? We are smart enough to do research. All the messages we have preached, if we change it into books and just balance and be receiving royalty, at least one of them will be a bestseller. Don't you think so? So what puts this fire? What makes you leave your house and come and sit down? And other people do not understand. You are a savior to them. And they are now criticizing you. Don't be afraid. You are the savior that will arise. Whenever people talk and say, You serve. Don't, nah, uh, you have the, another spirit. It's the spirit of Christ. Don't just come because you want a husband. Or because you want a wife. We, we dedicate miracle service for that. But there is an urgency. There is a curriculum of the spirit we must cover on time. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, Satan hates this meeting beyond your imagination. Never make mistakes. If you see people coming like this, it is because he cannot stop them. It's not that he doesn't want to. He cannot. Because keys have been given to us. And our job is to threaten him. I, my life's goal, among the numerous goal, is to give Satan heart attack before Jesus comes to take me home I'm not sure I may die before he comes because he's coming really soon hallelujah when we do everything we salute the earth and check out and say Toh, we have tried those who didn't listen to us I'm leaving my bible you can get it in Zaria and we'll check out we will in case all you are doing is amassing wealth and amassing everything if it is not for the kingdom i have a root shock for you you may not live to enjoy it because we will be going that's when you will see the vanity of life so the bible says lay for yourself treasures in heaven why are you i'm not against a life of comfort hallelujah but let your concentration be on the things of god so satan deceives us husband and wife i'm not against marriage again and all of these things Oh job, I don't have a job. God, I will backslide. And God is saying, after all I've done, oh yeah, backslide. Now it's your own fault. And the devil is saying, please go ahead, backslide. I will supply you the grace, the bad friends, all the arsenals you need to quickly backslide. That's why you can download any junk in the internet free of charge. Because the devil wants to accelerate your backsliding. And then we the men of God, Satan keeps making us sleep. And all that we are concerned doing is criticizing people and saying what God didn't call us to do. Hallelujah. Whereas we should concentrate on building the kingdom. 
we are here arguing about frivolities arguing about is it right to wear kaftan on stage or is it right to wear this all of those things the devil is saying continue i beg you any opportunity to distract the church the devil is saying this is what i want so the man of god now has a lot of money they give him a lot of jeep he said my soul find rest no prayer no study no anything and the person is happy and he says i i run a ministry of so 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 number of people and uh, i'm very fulfilled the devil said thank you more of this more of this but when satan finds people who when god blesses them it doesn't change it the devil says, how do we throw these people down See, the devil is thinking out. While you are sleeping, he's not sleeping. They are just meeting and saying, for God's sake, how are we going to put Aaron down? As in the middle of the discussion, then you wake up. You just felt like ventilating your spirit by one o'clock in the night. And you are shaking the car keys, meaning it does not matter. The car keys didn't change anything. Rise up on your feet. Let's close. Come on, let's begin to pray in the spirit. We have a passion, passion. to see his kingdom come. Pray. Say, Lord, to see your kingdom come. It's my desire to be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Your prayer is an eternal investment for yourself, for your family, for your church. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Three prayer points, and we're out of here. Number one is a prayer of gratitude. You're going to say, Lord, I never saw your love in this light now i know you care about me how can i kill myself suicide what for Say, Lord, I thank you for your love. So thank you for your love. In spite of myself, in spite of my limitations, in spite of my shortcomings, thank you, thank you for loving me enough to seek me oh yes thank you because you are not a man thank you because you are not a religious person hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two you're going to say lord i receive grace to contribute in whatever way that will show you that I love you and I'm interested in your agenda. Whatever way, by casting out devils, by financing the kingdom, by getting men saved, by getting them filled with the Holy Ghost, by praying for preachers, by praying for pastors, by not gossiping about people, whatever contribution, no matter how little, I receive grace, grace, grace. Whether is to pray for men of God, whether is to sow into their lives, whether is to sow into the kingdom, whether is to get men filled with the Holy Ghost, whether is to produce trust, whatever contribution of God, I receive grace. Listen, brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? Look at me. Do you know how desperate Jesus is to see his kingdom come, to see souls saved? No matter how little you contribute, 
you will hear him telling you thank you i know not everybody is interested you're going to pray and say every demonic hold that attempts to shift me away from the things of god lukewarm spirit bad friends bad associations be far from my life open your mouth and pray Why should I not put a gospel ringtone? Why should I put junk music in my phone? Why should I be afraid to wear a shirt that says I'm a kingdom addict? Why should I be ashamed to preach Jesus Christ? Because the lady is fine? Or because the guy is handsome? Or I don't want to be embarrassed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please take it down again. Hallelujah. Next week I'm going to teach you a song. This song came while I was in Kaduna. You gave your everything. I give my everything. You gave your everything. So I give my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Listen, it's a simple song. You have my everything. You have my everything. Lord, you have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Let's try one more time. You have my everything. 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 You have my take everything. all of me. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Hallelujah. I'm going to make an altar call right now. Everybody, please. Stand if you're sitting, stand except if you're kneeling. As we sing this song, you know that you have never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care who you are. This is a serious business. Please, we are not playing. Or if you've given your heart to the Lord but you found yourself derailing, Jesus welcomes you tonight. We want to recruit you as a matter of urgency so that you can participate in this building. There is an urgency. Christ is coming. There is an army that must be raised. Brothers and sisters, this is a program. This is an agenda that God is doing. There's no time to waste. Now is the time you will tell the world goodbye. You will tell the flesh goodbye. And you will make a real decision. So as I lift up my voice and as we sing this song, 
I want you inside and outside. No matter how far you have been away from God, no man condemns you. Only men condemn. God welcomes you. Come as you are. And God will make you a brand new person. Hallelujah. Now begin to come. God bless you. You have my everything. God bless you. Appreciate them. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. Keep coming, keep coming, inside and outside. You have my everything. Yeah. You have my everything. Shame on the devil tonight. Because you are going to come. Forget about your friends. Forget about your friends. You have my Welcome to your place of destiny. They call of me. All of me, Lord. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. It doesn't matter how far you can start tonight. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Lord, you have my everything. You are my everything. You are my everything. Lord, you have my everything. You are my everything. Take all of me. All of me. All of me. You are. those of you in front i'd like you to lift your hands and begin to talk to the lord some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears let it flow it's an indication of genuine repentance all of us in the congregation go ahead this is an agenda that is so key to god don't worry, just bring her. You can just bring her and keep her. Take all of me. Please pray for the people here. It's a mighty army. Take all of me. Take all of me, Lord. Hallelujah. All of you who are standing here, I'd like you to say after me from the depths of your heart. It's not a recitation of a poem. Don't let the devil condemn you. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what your way of life is. A new beginning starts for you. It's on account of your prophetic destiny. Don't be afraid. We are welcoming you. It's a mighty family. The Bible says weak men came to the cave of Adullam. And David made mighty men. We are not the ones who reject the things that God. No. No man can be a castaway. Hallelujah. I'd like you to say after me from the depths of your heart. Say after me Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. I accept that I'm a sinner. Unable to help myself. But tonight, I have seen that you love me. I repent of my sins. I ask Jesus to come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. From today, I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. In the mighty name of Jesus I am a child of God I am a child of God Satan take your hands off my life take your hands off my family from today I move forward ever and backward never let me pray for you keep your hands lifted father thank you thank you thank you for all the mighty people that you have brought we receive them with humility and we celebrate their gift in the body. Lord, we thank you because from today you will set them on fire. They will never be the same. No backsliding, no going back to the world. We impart upon you grace to rise up and live the victorious Christian life. May mighty men and women come out of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for this great decision, everyone. I appreciate and I celebrate you for this mighty decision. I'd like you to just follow the ushers. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this
this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.